going on, everyone? Welcome to another edition of Fast Five Sports. I'm Griffin Demeray, joined by the singular co-host today, our staff king, Jacob Gallant. Jacob, how are we feeling? Feeling good. We'll try to uh, fill the dead space from Matt's know, absence, not, absence as much, much as we can. Much, much different today. Much different <laughs> vibe today. But probably not as heated, but... Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the energy is probably taken out. But, but we got so, some fun stuff. A lot of good stuff to, to go. go over. We got high school football, college football... Grizzlies season right around the mm -hmm. corner, uh, and college basketball, believe it or not, is right there too, which is kind of hard to believe. Mm -hmm. Like this time of year, October, you think of it's football season, but the NBA starts next week, and college basketball starts in like two weeks. Yeah, um, I've been catching a little bit of the preseason games, but also the WNBA finals has been awesome the so WNBA far too. The WNBA finals has been Man, really good. that and shot Sabrina hit. That Whew. was wild. That was wild. That all was right, crazy. we're getting to all of it. Let's start with Friday football fever. We got an awesome slate of games coming to you tonight. Starting with our game of the week, I will be there. It is MUS taking on Christian Brothers, a match they've been playing since 1894. Last year's mm -hmm. game was won by MUS, 21-7. But much different story this year. Christian Brothers coming in at 4 to MUS at 2-5. and five. But we also got Overton Southwind, South Panola Center Hill, Cordova Collierville. Melrose Ridgeway and Hernando Horn Lake. A lot of good things on the slate. I do think this game of the week, though, MUS and Christian Brothers could be really interesting. This is a rivalry game they've been playing, like I said, hundreds of years now. And in rivalry games, especially in high school, I feel like anything can kind of happen. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, just, it's kind of like the Egg Bowl when I think about it. Like, no matter, <laughs> records go out the door. That's what um, Coach Mark Chubb at MUS was telling me last week. All records for this game go out the door, which. I'm sure MUS probably wants the record to go out the door. That would be <laughs> very helpful yeah. for them. But either way, I mean, Christian Brothers are going to have a backup quarterback for the second week in a row. They beat Briar Crest last week. But backup quarterback, rivalry game, it's definitely going to be a uh, bit of a toss-up. Yeah, hopefully less chaotic. You want, you want to bring up the Egg Bowl. Hopefully it's not as chaotic. Yeah, hopefully a little less chaotic. Unless you're into that sort of thing. Um, and then, yeah, looking at the rest of the slate, I mean, I just think there's going to be a bunch of really good games. I mean, mm -hmm. Collierville Cordova's won. Cordova's had a rough year, and Collierville's kind of a wagon right now. I mean, they've been that way since the beginning of the year, so I do think Collierville would dominate there. Southwood's been really good. Hernando Horn Lake will be an interesting game. Um, but yeah, we're going to have all of it tonight on Friday Football Fever. Tonight at 10, I'm going to have highlights from our game of the week, our Doc Holiday. We'll run through the, the entire slate, so you don't want to miss that. You also don't want to miss the football playing Memphis Tigers. Mm -hmm. College football slate is going to be really good this week, too. A lot of really Back in action. interesting games. You know what I mean? Last week, I think two weeks ago, you had all the, the, the wildness, the craziness yep. of Tennessee and Alabama losing. Mm -hmm. And last week, I think a lot of people looked at the slates and, oh, it's going to be a lot better. This, this week, there's Georgia and Texas, which is obviously the headliner that everyone's talking about. But I do think there are a lot of middle games that could be really tricky. Like, I mean, LSU going to Arkansas. That's... <laughs> That's I mean, not yeah, a place you want to go into no, right no, now. No, I do not want to play Sam Pittman's boys right now. I don't no, think anybody does. No, let's uh, let's let's take a look at our uh, slate of games real quick here. Yeah, we'll take a look at our local games. We start off. North Texas plays Memphis. That'll be at Liberty uh, Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium at six thirty tomorrow night. We have Alabama Tennessee third Saturday. That's in October. gonna be. That's gonna that's be, gonna be must a banger. Watch TV. Texas A&M goes to Starkville to take on your boys in mm -hmm. Mississippi State. And then we got LSU at Arkansas, like we were talking about. Let's start with let's start with Memphis, because this mm -hmm. is a really interesting game for them. North Texas comes in at 5-1. and one. Memphis yep. comes in at 5-1. and one. North Texas is a weird 5-1, and one, though, because their one loss is to Texas Tech, and they got blown, blown out. Blown out. Like, the door's blown they, out. Yeah. But Dominated. You look at the, our other games, and it's like, North Texas is a team where I look at it, and you don't know if they're good or they're not good they mm -hmm. played uab really close and uab yeah. so far this year has looked horrible horrendous so like Ma I don't know one of the that, worst in the nation i don't know what that really says yeah um <laughs> i was looking into this this uh mean green team a little bit earlier <laughs> the, we're not at the trivia section yet but do you know how many times north texas has won 10 games in a season i'm gonna go with one Zero. zero. They've never I mean, done it. Either it. one or zero. That was just uh, surprising to me. This is not a historically great program. Uh, second year under head coach Eric Morris. Um, yeah, I mean, 
if you look at their their schedule for the year so far, it's been a lot of shootouts, a lot of high-scoring games. Uh, they scored 52 against Tulsa, 41 against Florida Atlantic, 44 against Wyoming. So they could put points on the board, um, <laughs> which might be a little scary uh, based on how Memphis's defense has looked at times this year. Um, but, yeah, um, this is one that Memphis pretty much needs to have. Yeah, that, I mean, not like one they can afford to lose. Week, from this point on, they're all, they're all wins. All, but it, this yeah. is a really interesting point in their schedule because if you look at it, Start of the year, everyone was looking at that Florida State game. And then yep. you had the game against Navy, the slip-off. And after that, it's the American Conference schedule, which throughout the years has slowly gotten worse and worse and worse as mm -hmm. you've lost schools like SMU. Yep. You've lost all these different other schools. And now you just kind of have these, these weird, almost every game feels like a trap game until you get to Tulane at the end of the year. And you know it's, what I mean? Every game, and UTSA also has a pretty mm -hmm. solid team this year, but... There's games in there. You got UAB in there at some point. You got North Texas. It's just, I don't know, they're weird games where, like, they almost look like look-over spots, but for a team like Memphis, they can't look over anyone from this point on. It's really just week to week. It's really, we got to win this one. Don't worry about next week because this one is the one that matters. Which is where the American Conference might actually benefit them because you're not really looking ahead to too many opponents, again, like I said, until probably Tulane, the last game of the year on Thanksgiving. Yeah, and uh, so interesting, if you remember last year's game went right down to the wire between these two teams. Yeah. Uh, North Texas had the lead with 47 seconds left. Memphis scores, ends up winning by three points, 45-42. Uh, that, like like that was a heck of a game. Um, and then the Tigers hold the all-time advantage 18-4. to So not a, not a team they usually lose no. to. 18 to 4 uh, all time. Against, but dude, you never know in this college football world. Against the year. Mean Green. It has been crazy. You um, really don't. I, w I would expect to see a lot of points on the board. Let's talk about points. Let's talk about Alabama, Tennessee. Or maybe not points <laughs> on what we've seen the past couple weeks. Um, I think this one is all a question of which Alabama team you get. Do you get Alabama that played Georgia, or do you get the last two weeks Alabama that has lost to Vanderbilt and should have lost to South Carolina? That, I mean, that's the burning question. Tennessee, yeah. I mean, world beaters for the first five games, lose at Arkansas, and then look shaky at best against a bad Florida team last week. A game they probably should have lost. Yeah, they, um, they definitely should have <laughs> lost, yeah. But, I mean, hey, I mean, take what you can get. Yeah, I, I, I think if the Vols were to lose this game, it's probably – Momentum is not looking great. No, but it's, I mean, they can. I mean, we remember what happened last time Alabama went to Tennessee. Right, no. I mean, I think this game could totally go either way. I, I mean, Alabama's looked shaky. Tennessee's looked shaky the last few weeks. But we know these both of these teams are really talented. They have the capability to beat yeah. pretty much anyone in the nation. But you really don't know who's showing up. You know, I, I don't know what... you're getting. You have I don't, no idea. We... We on this show we were talking so highly about Nico the first few weeks of the season. He looked awesome, and he really hasn't looked great yeah. the last two three games. Um, really, the three three games because the Oklahoma win, their defense kind of carried him. Yeah, in that and the one. thing is with Alabama, that defense since halftime of that Georgia game has just been awful. I mean, yep. Vanderbilt went for four hundred and fifty yards. South yeah. Carolina was throwing it the yard too, especially down the end of the game. So. This is the game where I think Tennessee can really get some momentum here and maybe propel themselves forward because if they can get that offense going, that Alabama defense has looked extremely vulnerable. They're really going to have to come out of the gate quick. They're going to have to put points on the board right away because if that offense gets stagnant again like it's been in the last few yeah. weeks, I don't, I don't think they're just going to be able to flip a switch and just turn that yeah. on instantly and against offense, an Alabama defense. For Even though they've lost, Bama's offense has still looked – Fairly decent. Yeah. They struggled a little bit against Carolina last week. Milro wasn't great, but it's Vandy. I mean, they still put up 40 points. It's usually enough to be Vandy, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and then pretty much any other. And pretty year. much any other team. Uh, too, but, but Tennessee's defense has looked pretty steady the last few weeks. I'm, I'm kind of more concerned about where their offense is at yeah. and if they can put enough points on the board. But again, my point comes down to all right, Tennessee's defense has looked good, but it's the same question as earlier in the year. What is the. What does the competition look like? Yeah. 
I mean, they That's played true. in conference Arkansas, who's not really known for their offense this year. They played Florida, who plays two quarterbacks for some reason 90% of the time, <laughs> which I thoroughly don't understand. That's the Billy Napier system. Man. And then they played Oklahoma, who benched their quarterback yeah. in after halftime and brought in a true freshman. So they haven't really played an offense that is explosive like this. No, that's like nobody Alabama's on the a, level of Alabama. Yeah, Alabama's a completely different offense than Tennessee has seen all year. But to the same token, I don't know. It's going to be very – I mean, this game's always awesome. Yeah. Something always happens. Yeah. I think no matter what, I think we can expect a good game. Fireworks. Uh, I, don't think it, I don't think either team is going to blow, no. blow one out. No. No. Um, um, but yeah. Moving to blowouts, let's talk about one that didn't happen last week that we were all expecting. Mississippi State had hung around with Georgia. Had me in the first half there, but they okay. Did. Um, yeah, I mean, oh man, I, I think Michael Van Buren Jr. is is a guy. Yeah. He looked really good. Um, th- they're building momentum, which is weird to say when you're losing games, but they just played the absolute hardest two game stretch you can possibly oh, play. Yes. And you have a. At, uh, at Texas and at Georgia. And you have a first-year head coach with a true freshman quarterback play. Yeah. Like, there's going to be growing pains, and there's going to be things that need to be worked on. I would not be stunned at all if they were able to beat Texas A&M in this game. This is it's in a- Starkville. a and M's kind of feeling the momentum mm-hmm. right now. They might be underestimating the Mississippi State team that their record doesn't look good, but they've been playing hard. Um, and the, off- the offense has looked pretty steady. The defense is shaky that it's better than it was to start the year off. Um, but I, I think they can put up some points on this Texas A&M team. I would not be surprised if, if yeah, we saw an update, an that. upset in Starkville this week. This is an extremely close game down to the wire 100%. Mm-hmm. This is one of those games, too, where if you watch, you'll first turn on the TV and you'll have no idea which team to. They have the <laughs> exact same colors and wear like same the exact team. same uniforms, basically. So yeah. I've had that issue in the past when I watched these teams play, but I <laughs> totally agree. I think this is A&M stomped Missouri. Was A&M on by last week? I think they were. Yes, A&M's on a bye. Was on A&M a bye, stomped yeah. Missouri two weeks ago. On by could be a look ahead spot. I mean, I don't. I don't think their schedule is too bad down the stretch. I mean, they have Texas at the very end of the year. Mm-hmm. But this is going to be a very tricky game for A&M because if Mississippi State can just get some things going, capture something that they had in that second half of that Georgia game, mm-hmm. they're going to give A&M all the trouble they want and some. I think. If not this week, I think this team is going to pull off an upset at some point at the end of the season. Let's get it out, Let's get it out before the Egg Bowl. <laughs> Let's get it out before the I Egg Bowl. You, I know you would appreciate getting that out of the system, but hey, you might start building some momentum after getting one, so maybe you don't want it that to is get true. out of the way. Maybe you just hope it never comes. Let's talk uh, about the Hogs again. And, man. Ugh, LSU. <laughs> I mean, just gut-wrenching, but... LSU goes to Arkansas in what is another mm-hmm. tricky, tricky game for them. Um, yeah. LSU, in a lot of games, has gotten by by the skin of their teeth. They did it again last week against Ole Miss in a game they should have lost the entire time. They pull out a win. Now they have to go to Arkansas. I believe it's a night game as well. So that place will be rocking once again. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how Arkansas – they, they were on a bye last week, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, it's, it's really going to be interesting to see what they've done since that Tennessee win to build on that momentum. Uh, I mean, if they win, that they're pretty much going to a bowl game at that yeah, point. Yeah, I mean, that pretty much shows it. And for um, what the expectations were coming into this season, everyone calling for Sam Pittman's job, just getting to a bowl game. He's, is, th- he's done a heck of a job. He's done yeah, a heck of a job, If you look really. at Arkansas's schedule, they host mm-hmm. every team like this, but they have Tennessee at home, LSU at home, they have Ole Miss at home, and Texas at home. Yeah, that's brutal. I mean, those are preseason four brutal. top, what, 15 teams? Yeah. All, I mean, you get them all at home, so that's a bonus, but, I mean, their schedule is just a gauntlet. And for that, and they played at Oklahoma State to start the year. So yeah, I mean. to kind of do what they were doing, it's, it's very impressive. Yeah, I mean, maybe LSU comes in and they just kind of take care of the business um, as the more talented team. But the way Arkansas is playing, I, I I feel like we're on upset alert again. And I think this could be a big letdown spot for LSU. Mm-hmm. You storm the field. You win in overtime. I mean, it's just a unbelievable. Loss would, and then this is the letdown A spot. loss would pretty much knock you out of the playoff as well. Yeah, I mean, they're on the brink of it as well with losses yeah. to USC, which is not aging well. 
as the season no, goes on. No, not, not aging well at all. Um, They've been kind of a disaster. Ole Miss is on by, thank God. Um, <laughs> don't have to watch the misery anymore. Uh, last week was just... I mean, Matt said it best when I was talking to him about it. You can't... When you're on the road in Death Valley, in a place you haven't won in years, you can't not score on drives. Yep. Early in the game, Trey Harris drops the touchdown. Mm-hmm. Drops an 80-yard touchdown right through his hands. You miss the field goal. Then you go for it on fourth and one, the next drive, on the LSU 10-yard line, and don't get it. That's 17 points that you just left on the board, and it's 0-0 at the end of the first. I mean, it's just, you can't come back from that. You yeah. really can't. I mean, you're just letting them back into the game, and you knew at a certain point that that offense was going to click, and it finally did. It's like time and time again, no matter how LSU looks, it's like Death Valley is just never safe. They... LSU could look horrible, and you'd go into Death Valley and go, "Oh no, this is <laughs> this might be a bad time." I mean, because you really half, they look terrible. Yeah. I mean, they look Nussmeyer threw an interception off his own offensive lineman's helmet, <laughs> and we stayed Ole Miss still couldn't score. It was unbelievable how just the game was being gifted to Ole Miss. It looked like, and they just refused to take it. And LSU once again finds to finds a way to win in Death Valley, which is very impressive. You really, yeah, you really just can't make any mistakes in, in Death Valley at Death night. Valley at night it's, man. It, it's a it's a monster in itself. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, Ole Miss probably has to win out. And that might not at, even be enough. And that's I I, I yeah. It I mean a win over Georgia out. is probably gonna be enough to get the committee looking at them. Uh but I guess it does it, it probably depends on how the rest of yeah, you're the gonna landscape some, some things holds to fall your way. You probably would want a team like Notre Dame to lose one here. You would need A and M to lose one at some point. Um just teams in that tweener mix. Clemson could lose another and that could help. But yep. at this rate, I mean, I, I don't even think we can talk about winning out with Ole Miss. I mean, I, I don't see it in the cards. I see a loss at home to Georgia, I see a loss on the road at Arkansas. Like it's you're staring down the bullet of eight and four. Yeah. Uh, speaking of teams not wanting to go into Arkansas, I know it's, yeah, I, oh it's my, historically not been. Historically, like, another place. Maybe we're just not good anywhere. <laughs> um, let's move on from that. Uh, that's I that's a bit of a curse. Um, let's talk college hoops. We were just talking about yeah. it. It's right around the corner, man. Um, Memphis coming into the year, zero votes in the top 25. Were you surprised by that? I was. Because, but... I wasn't, I wasn't. I mean, yes, the roster is stacked. You brought in a loaded transfer class again. There are plenty of college basketball writers. I know John Rothstein's one of them. Has him at 45 preseason. I think that's where a lot of people have them falling into. Somewhere in that 35 to 45 range. And I I think it does have to do with the collapse of last year. And Mm -hmm. how things just fell apart. How the wheels came off. This was a top 10 team that was then losing three games in a row on a Texas road trip by 30 every game. So I do think the committee has looked at that and said, I don't think we can give them the kind of pub that maybe they deserve. But, hey, they're going to they're gonna get a test week one with Missouri. Mm-hmm. Um, we know Penny always schedules crazy out of conference, and this year you kind of have to. Again, yeah. kind of like we talked about in football, yeah. the American has very much fallen, I don't want to say fallen behind, but kind of taken a step back in terms of basketball with Dusty May leaving FAU. They're not nearly the program that they were last year going in. And, but that being said, Memphis was still not projected to win the conference preseason. Right. And it, you might be in a spot where you kind of have to win it. Yeah, this um, is going to be a one-bid league probably. Depending on how things go. Depending on how things shake out <clears throat> non-conference, this is probably a one-bid league. Um, I think if you're a Tigers fan, you do like what you saw this past week against North Carolina in the uh, St. Jude uh, tip-off game. Yep. They looked good. They came out really hot. Yes, they mm-hmm. couldn't keep up with North Carolina star power, but North Carolina is top five team in the country this year. Yeah. Now, one downside was that was without R.J. Davis. So you can imagine how good North Carolina is probably going to be going forward. Yeah, I mean, I think really you just wanted to show that you could compete. Yeah. Um, and that you were kind of on that similar plane as and them. Penny even said after the game that they weren't showing anything. They didn't run any sets. They didn't run anything crazy. Yeah. They just kind of went I mean, up and down. Just it was to, still a preseason game. Yeah, so. just kind of feel things out. Um, P.J. Harrity looked good. Tyrese Hunter, the two big transfers from this past year mm-hmm. from Tulsa and Texas, looked really good. So I think you have to like what you have there. Again, it's it's Penny, so it's going to be all transfers and a new team every year. So, yeah. But you do got to like there. One team that was in the preseason top 25, Ole Miss. 
Mm. Kind of surprising. And the Hogs. Hogs came in at, I believe, 15. Old and the Vols are there? 24. Vols, I believe, were 7? That's not, no, like 12 or 13. There's a stack of around SEC there. teams, yeah. 11, 12, around 13. There, yeah. SEC came in with 9 teams in the top 25. I was a little surprised to see Ole Miss on there, too. Um, are you feeling I mean, optimistic about Yeah, I mean, it's Beard, and I think here? he's a top 20 coach in college basketball. Yes, he has his off the off the court issues, but on the court he's a tremendous coach. Mm-hmm. He brought in similar to Penny, a phenomenal transfer class. A lot of guys coming from schools a little lower that are ready to make that big jump. So the SEC is just gonna be a golf this year. It yeah. It's gonna be an absolute golf. You have nine to ten tournament teams, in my opinion. And I mean good for Memphis. They play Two of them. They play, don't they play Mississippi State this year as well? Yes, they, they do. Have State and Ole Miss. And, and they Memphis. have Alabama in the scrimmage, don't they? Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe, I believe so. There's a scrimmage coming yeah. up against Bama too, so. Yeah, I mean, Mississippi State was a team I kind of I kind of thought they might have snuck into the rankings, but they did receive uh, some votes. I can't remember exactly yeah. how many, but that's a good roster as well. I mean, Chris Bring James back. had them rolling last uh, year. Yeah, I, th- I really like what he's building there. Bringing back Josh Hubbard, who was great last year. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see that. Uh, it, those will be really interesting tests for Memphis um, playing kind of the Mid-South schools. It's, it's fun that we get a little bit of mingling between, yeah. between the, the, Mississippi, the Mississippi schools and, and Memphis this year. Try, I mean, it's obvious what Penny's trying to do. He's trying to make sure that, God forbid, you blow up in conference a little bit. Maybe not yeah. as bad as last year, but say you lose two or three in conference, you have that fallback of, say, you beat Mississippi State. In December, say you beat Clemson in November, yep. those wins can just bolster you up a little bit, so that if you, God forbid, you don't win the conference, you do have that little extra wiggle room to try and get in. Um, mm-hmm. Last thing on college basketball, I cannot wait to watch Arkansas this year. Yeah, uh, they were really be fun so last year. Crazy to watch, man. I mean, it's going to be unbelievable. Cal just in a different color, not in blue, is just going to feel so weird. But they're going to be loaded. I mean, he brought in. He had the Dion quote, basically. I'm bringing my luggage in. Because <laughs> he brought dudes with him. And yeah, that's going to be very good. That's going to be surreal. It, yeah, just seeing him not wearing blue is going to be so odd. It's going to feel wrong. Yeah. Like, it's not that, It's not supposed to be like that. Yeah. And, and Arkansas has been kind of one of those plucky teams that can kind of make a little bit of noise in March. Oh, yeah. Um, and so, obviously, adding <laughs> arguably one of the best coaches – in you know, in modern history. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's going to be a really fun I mean, if you remember months. back in the Musselman days, they had, what was it? It was a four-year stretch where I think they went Sweet 16, Elite 8, Elite 8, Sweet 16. Yep. So, I mean, they are very good in the postseason every year. Um, another quick shout-out, Tony Bennett, Virginia head coach, suddenly retired. I'm here today. Today. Kind of weird, crazy timing. He said in his press conference today he was just – didn't like the direction the game was going in and just said, I don't think it's for me anymore. Do you think he's he's kind of feeling the, the Nick Saban effect as well? Maybe. Just similar Because he's one of those reasoning. coaches who's just been doing it for years. National title, title winner. He won three Coach of the Year awards. Just interesting for a guy like that to just bow out. I kind of... Two and a half weeks before the season. Assuming that it is kind of like a, a an NIL deal thing that he's got going on, I kind of respect just bowing out and leaving as opposed to the guys who just complain about it nonstop. Like, Davos. you know, Davos Sweeney, exactly who I was going to say. I mean, you're right. You're right. I, you know, I almost time, respect though. just going, you know what? This isn't for me. I'm out of here. All yeah, respect. you left your team just out to Oh, no, the timing, the timing is terrible. I mean, I, we start the season two no, 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 no. and they're going to have a new coach. And that, now the transfer portal opens up. That's, because he that's left, different. That's different. He, yeah, he should not abandon his team right before the season. And he even that, said, he was like, yeah. oh, I was thinking about it in the offseason. Like, dude, you probably no, should have just you, done it, like, weeks you ago. You should have done this in, like, April or May. Yeah. Like, I mean, no, crazy. Man. The wild Come part on, about man. it is that now the portal opens for 30 days for those players. The season yeah. starts in 20. So the portal is going to be open for those players. And it's, it's almost to the point, too, where – the players on that team who may want to leave are kind of in a bad spot now because a lot of the top teams in the country are not going to want to just take on a new player at this point in the no, season. No, a lot of them don't have slots open. I know right. two teams that do have slots open. <laughs> Memphis and Arkansas are both, both coaches. 
Penny I, Cal I, said, I, I bet Penny is on the phone. We already. are leaving a roster spot open. Do not be surprised if Penny makes a phone call. I, I think he probably already has. Yeah, because I'm sure there's <laughs> a lot of guys on that roster. I, that I'm sure that thing's been ringing. Big things. Um, stay on hoops. Final preseason game for the Grizzlies tonight. Taking on the Miami Heat. I'm mm-hmm. sure we will not see much in terms of starters playing or anything like that. I have seen chatter that Jaw may get some minutes tonight. Uh, I don't know if that is confirmed or not. Um, he might just try to be working on back. Because he hasn't played since the rolling of his ankle. Right. right? Um, it is an interesting philosophy because I was watching Nuggets and Timberwolves last night, and Minnesota did not play any of their starters. It, they went full bench rotation, and the Nuggets played all of their starters. Really? Heavy minutes. And when I tell you that Luca Garza was out playing Nikola Jokic last night, I'm not kidding. Luca Garza, 27 points. Nikola Jokic looked really sluggish. Like, he did not want to be there, which, yeah, which is, is his fair. default, but he also had, I think, like, two points. The dude barely wants to be um, the season's actually in session. So, I, I, it almost felt like the players were revolting against Mike Malone for making <laughs> them play so many minutes in a preseason game. And, like, the Timberwolves bench was so energized against it. Um, but, yeah, just to say... I don't really know what Taylor Jenkins' strategy is look, looking at going into tonight because th- those are two coaches on different ends of the spectrum uh, that I just noticed last night. Yeah. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some starters get I some mean, matches tonight, especially. Too. I mean, I've seen Jimmy play a couple of games now. Bam has played a little bit. I don't know. I just feel like one game before the season, just shut it down. I mean, I could <laughs> see Ja maybe getting a couple of minutes because you want right. to get him back just in a game that isn't a scrimmage just a little bit. But even that, I just feel like with this team, like, let's just get everyone to the finish line, please. <laughs> there, there is a, there, yeah, there is validity to that because you just had so many like, injury just problems. Wrap these just like in bubble wrap and just get them in Utah. <laughs> like at, at this point, like just get them there. Just to avoid like the bad juju of doing it. Yeah, first um, game against the Jazz Wednesday in Utah. Then they mm-hmm. have another road game. They come back home. First home game is next Saturday against the Magic. Um, should be a great crowd. I'm thinking Saturday is going to be pretty electric in the fall. Yeah, the season opener at FedEx Forum always is. And Orlando is not a pushover anymore. That's a good team. Yeah. Um, we were talking about them last last week. Yeah. Um, Paolo is a stud. They've got a lot of guys that just play gritty defense. A lot of guys that can, well, they, they, they're working on the three-point shooting. They added Caldwell Pope, yeah. who can kind of do both. That, that's going to be a fun crowd. That's going to be two teams with higher expectations than I think most people think coming into this year. Sounds weird, but hear me out. Again, both of those teams probably projected to finish fifth-ish in their conferences. Grizzlies and... Interestingly enough, I don't know if you saw this, um, The Athletic put their uh, playoff projections out last uh, earlier this week. The Grizzlies were not in the top eight. The West? That very much surprised me. I just don't know how that's, how yeah. that's possible. I mean, um, you look at rosters up and down, I just don't see how that's possible. Maybe they're assuming everyone gets hurt again, but <laughs> I mean, I don't see how that's possible. Uh, let let me find uh, exactly. I know the Lakers were the eight seed. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, it was just kind of bizarre uh, seeing the Grizzlies left off. Um, yeah, I mean, again, the West is loaded. That, no one is fighting that argument that the West has – is so deep in terms of talent, but I just see the Grizzlies roster as being a step ahead of some of these teams. Like the Grizzlies have a much better roster up and down the Lakers. And also, I mean, the Clippers with Kawhi Leonard's Kawhi injury, the year, uh, th- not th- the year, but. that Clippers team, Sands, Kawhi Leonard, I, I don't like it. Well, have I, you seen? I, I, I don't like now? it. Is Kawhi Leonard's not playing? So with Kawhi Leonard on the Clippers, they are what? They're not, they're not a playoff team No, by any means. Not they're at all. probably much, much lower, probably not even a play-in team at that point. Guess who has their first-round pick this year? Oklahoma City. The Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, Could you imagine a world in where the Clippers tank this year? That's, that's, another, th- that's another thing. Like, the, the Thunder just have too many picks. They can't 
keep all of these picks and just use them because they don't have the roster spots. Yeah. You're, hey, yeah. If, if I mean, there's a chance that picks a top three pick and the lottery comes around, I'm just saying Cooper flag and a Thunder jersey. <laughs> but where it's do too you, early. But too where early. do you? But where do you put him? Where, where? How does he fit into that lineup? Oh my gosh! You put him. You you do Shea, Lou Dort, Chet, Cooper Flag, Jalen Williams. I mean, that's a load. I mean, that's a loaded I mean it's five. loaded. Uh, yeah. So, um, the Athletic has the Grizzlies at 11th in the West. Uh, at f- they're projecting them to go 40 and 42, which I really I really don't understand the logic. They've got the Rockets at 10. I like the Rockets. I don't I just don't think it's I, I certainly yet. don't think they're better than the Grizzlies. No. Um, they've got um, the Kings at 9. I like the Kings a lot. That's a loaded West. I I would put the Kings higher. I kind of um, have the Kings in in my personal opinion. Yeah, um, I know they had the Lakers 8. Uh, I'm just, just. I mean, that's just a whole. I, I know everything that comes with the Lakers, and the, it's still LeBron James and Anthony Davis. But I just, I'm not high on that roster. I don't see it either. I see them as a low playing team. <laughs> I'm not high on that roster. I, I, it's. It was weird to me because I really thought the the consensus among a lot of the NBA sphere is that the Grizzlies are going to bounce back because that roster is so talented. Yeah. But. To see stuff like that, and that's just one example of the athletic. Um, it, yeah, it's interesting to see the different projections for the Grizzlies. Like, I, I've seen projections where they're like a two seed or, you know, down all the way to 11, which it, it's just kind of speaks to how strong the West is. Yeah, and how because basically anything could happen. There's going to be a really good team that doesn't make it in. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, there has to be. I mean, it, it, well, it depends what you think of really good team. Are the Lakers a really good team? <laughs> well, well. So, if if we're if we're considering locks for like Oklahoma City, Memphis, uh, Minnesota, uh, Denver. Denver, Dallas, then we're looking at one of like New Orleans, uh, Sacramento, Memphis. Um, like one of these teams is not going to make it. You know what yeah. I mean? Or you know, they'll be the tenth. And yeah. just get knocked out right away. Hey, it's gonna be. It, they're all really it's good teams. It's gonna be a heck of a year in the West. For yeah. Sure. You got. You got another thing you wanted to look at? Yeah, I, I wanna. I wanna just. I just wanna hate on the just ESPN rankings real quick. All right. So the ESPN put out their uh, top hundred uh, players for the season. Always a fun list. There's four Grizzlies on the list. I kind of want to go in reverse order, and I want to get your thoughts on some of this. All right. So. The reason I want to go in reverse order is because this is kind of the one I agree with. So they've got John Morant at 20. Okay. I, I think that's pretty that's valid. Right. I think that's a good spot for him. Um, just above him is Tyrese Maxey, who I know you're not going to disagree with. Um, I mean, that's strictly based off of last year. That's strictly based off of you don't. they don't know if John's going to come back and be the same player. Yeah, I mean, they're they're projecting as for the season, but right. Um, I mean, Bam Adebayo, I'm not taking I mean, him the, over Jaw. I, I, I the, the, get where they're going. He's good, but every year I see Bam Adebayo in these rankings as a top yeah. 15 player. And I'm like, yes, he's a good defender. On offense, what what does he do? He's that's, more that, of a complimentary guy. You know yeah. what I mean? He can't lead a team. I look at top 15, top 20 guys. I think they're guys that can lead a team to the playoffs or lead a team on a run. Van der is not leading a team. He's the second option on their own team, maybe third. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, as far as guards, they've got Donovan Mitchell above Ja. I, I, I kind of buy that. Tyrese Halliburton, I don't know if I buy him above Ja, but I get it. I, I get it. I mean, after, it was, the, after last season, yeah. I get why you would put him there. Um, and then, so, I mean... It's not perfect, but I, I think Ja at twenty is pretty reasonable. Yeah, I think I think it's fair. Um, <laughs> I guess the other ones will not. The rest of the list. Okay. Uh, shout out Herb Jones at ninety-seven, just outrageously low. Just <laughs> what are, what are we doing there? Uh, so we've got Marcus Smart at eighty-three. 
How do you feel about Marcus Smart at 83? Um, well, I mean, you just told me Herb Jones is at 98. I think Herb Jones is a much better player. Than I do Marcus too, Smart at but this point in his career, I think Smart at 83 is fair. I there wasn't a ton to go off of last year. Obviously, former Defensive Player of the Year. So they've got him above C.J. McCollum, which I think is interesting. I mean, McCollum's definitely regressed. Yeah. Um, they've got him above Lou Dor. I, I might take Lou Dor over Marcus Smart at this point in their with. careers. I just look at Lou Dor. He's younger, quicker, more athletic, can do more offensive, yeah. I think, too. Uh, he's kind of a spark plug. He's yeah. kind of like a young Marcus Smart was they're, in, they're a, very in, in a way. Players. Um, so we've got Mitchell Robinson above Marcus Smart. I don't That's think I would take so Mitchell gracious. Robinson over Marcus Smart. Thank God, Matt's um, here. <laughs> Miles Turner, I think, is better. That's fair. Jeremy Grant, I think, is fair. better. Fred Van Vliet, you know, he's got limitations, but I think that's fine. Yeah. Uh, so overall, I mean, I, I think I'm okay with Smart at 83. I think you move him down a little bit into the 90s probably. But yeah. then again... You don't know what he's going to be. That's another thing. You just don't know what he's going to look like coming into this year. Yeah, and, and he hasn't had a ton of experience playing next to Jaw, which is really the no, question. No, which is really what's going to gel this week. Um, so <laughs> we've got Desmond Bain at number 60. Um, in a vacuum, I think Bain at 60 is fine. Um, but some of these players well, around the here. Who's around him? First of all... Josh Hart at 61, nice. what, are what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? I love Josh Hart. He's one of my favorite players. I love his game. But the 61st best player. For a guy who just. A guy who doesn't really provide a lot on offense. No. Um, again, I love Josh Hart. Love his game, but what are we doing there? Anyway. Once again, if not, we're here. Um, right now. <laughs> so we've got Alex Caruso, a spot above Desmond Bain. Yeah. That's close. I'm probably taking Bain. Again, I think this is this is all just the same thing. It's just, I think there's short-term memory loss in the NBA when it comes <laughs> to this team. People forget what these players were like when they were healthy and playing well. Yeah, Bain, Bain made a, it felt like Bain made a huge leap last year. Yeah. And they've got him a spot higher than he was in, in 2023. Yeah, and below guys like Caruso. Um, it's just. Kobe White is a, a spot above Caruso. I think I'm taking Bain over Kobe. I am. I, Keep going. <laughs> uh, Darius Garland. Garland, the potential is there, but it's, it feels like a bad fit next to Mitchell. Yeah. I do love Darius Garland. I like he, his game. He's he, quick. He can shoot. Yeah. Great passer. But I just don't um, know. Arguably more egregious than the Herb Jones at 97 is Derek Lively at 56. What in the world are we doing? <laughs> If you told me you get Derek Lively or Desmond Bain, there I I'm taking no I time to think about it. I, who is building a team around Derek Lively before Desmond Bain? I mean Derek Lively is just like a he's just a, a three and or not three and he's just a rebounder. He's a rebounder and dunker. Uh-huh. That's it. They weigh so heavily into last year's playoffs because Lively was yeah. good in the playoffs, but in the regular season he he was good, but like better than Darius better Garland than, and yeah. Desmond Bain. He's not fifties good. I can tell you that much. He's <laughs> the same player as Herb Jones, except he has three inches on him, and Herb Jones I think does more. Yes. I think he absolutely does more. So a spot above that is where we get to Jaron Jackson Jr. One spot above Derek Lively. Right, right. Uh, so, oh, so Triple J dropped. He was 31 in last year's ranking. He dropped to 55. Um, so, obviously, wow. last year he was coming off the Defensive Player of the Year. Um, but, I mean, there was nothing that really regressed about his game no, not in at all. the I year. Mean, I think it was just the issue of he was just asked to do so much more. Right. I think that's where it may, I don't think he had the best percentages throughout the year, but that's just because I mean, dude had to take thirty shots a game. Right. Like he, he literally had to. There was nothing else he could do, and so many times it was basically just him running ISO from the top of the key, getting double teamed every play. And we already had enough as evidence that that wasn't uh, his best uh, usage. No. As soon as we got Jaw, it was like, okay, Jaw's the number one guy. Exactly. But. 
Jaron Jackson is a, a fine number yeah, two I think option. Next year, this is all going to change. Um, so they've got him below Shengun. I like Shengun a lot. I think it's maybe too early to put him above Jaron Jackson Jr. R.J. Barrett is absolutely That's not outrageous. better than Jaron Jackson that is Jr. So but, but no. That is <laughs> Under so no outrageous. circumstances is R.J. Barrett a better player than Jaron Jackson Jr. This is why I don't I don't take any stock in these lists. I, they do the NFL one every year too, and I'm like, what are we doing? Like, what, what are we doing? <laughs> And then, and, and then to round out the, the 50s, we have uh, Franz Wagner and OG and Anobi. Oh, I mean, man. I can buy Franz. I, the potential is there. Um, OG is what he is. Uh, yeah, and I, I don't know. I, I, I think Jaron provides more offensively than OG does. And he's a better defender than both. Yeah, I mean, he won defensive player yeah, of the year, and those guys did. <laughs> so I love I love Franz's game too, um, which is then in turn he should be ahead of both I, of them. Yeah, you know what I mean. It feels like they could have moved Triple J up. It, I I don't really understand the logic behind some of that. No, um, especially no, but, yeah, RJ Barrett just. No. I mean, that's all gonna that's no. all gonna change next year when <laughs> the team has a great season and. Everything, everything's going to move around. I don't think Jaron's going to be worse than R.J. Barrett this year. So Maybe we can get a fifth player onto the list. Yeah, maybe Edie will, maybe his Edie list will, will make his way onto the list. Um, let's talk about the baseball game of the year last night. That was electric. That was nuts. Guardians-Yankees, game three, must have for the Guardians. You needed it yep. or else you were just done. You can't go down 3-0. Obviously, everyone yep. knows that. But... Guardians up 3-1 in the eighth, back-to-back homers from the Yankees. They get a sack fly, 5-3, big Christmas, Feliz <laughs> Navidad hits the crazy two-run bomb, sends the place into a frenzy, and then Guardians win it in extras. Back, another bomb. Back against the wall, that was incredible. Just right off the bat when David Fry hit that homer, he knew it was gone. And you could hear the roar. There was that video going around. Yes. I saw it from outside that was the stadium awesome. looking in and just the roar with the fireworks. Oh, my God. That was awesome. That was unbelievable stuff. Incredible game and an equally bad game from the NL side. Dodgers just kind of smoked the Mets last night. Um, yeah, rough night for Grimace and the boys. <laughs> rough night for Mookie Grimace Betts is just ridiculous. Uh, I know Tani yeah. hitting another bomb. So, I mean... I, Starting to accept the fact that it's probably going to be Yankees and Dodgers World Series. I know a lot of people are not interested in that, but man, those are two offenses with a lot of punch. Yeah, I think the Mets just got. They just can't keep up. It's that simple. I mean, the Mets have a good lineup, one through four, but then you get to five, and you're like, who's helping me? They have no depth at the bottom of that lineup. I mean, yeah. again, Lindor, Alonzo have been great this postseason. And so has Vientos has been fantastic. But after that, it's like, where are we going? Yeah. And the Dodgers just one through nine have dudes just raking nonstop. Yeah. If you put a lineup together just with that many dudes that just mash the ball, like. Yeah. I'd be shocked <laughs> if that series goes I, uh, you know, after I, the next game. I think we were both worried about the Dodgers pitching going into the playoffs. I mean, when you could put up enough runs, it really doesn't matter. And, and, and all their guys are hitting right consistently, now. Consistently, you're going to win. All games. their guys are hitting right now. Yeah. Um, uh, I think yeah. the Dodgers are going to dominate that. Uh, NFL, week seven, a little bit of movement, right? A couple big trades this couple week. big trades. Devontae um, Adams goes back to Aaron Rodgers because, hey, let's just run it back again, right? They said last dance with Green Bay and lost in the divisional round, so maybe they'll last dance it again and miss the playoffs this time. But, um, yeah, it – it's it's another one. It's another. It just feels like a panic move. You, you don't know how long you got Aaron Rodgers around. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're they're just pushing the, all the chips in. They're I mean, they're doing pretty much everything they can. He's yelling at the sideline. He's yelling at the receivers. It's just a mess. It looks like right now. That I mean that's uh, yeah that when and I just don't know if Devontae Adams fixes that mess. Aaron Rodgers is one of those guys when things are going poorly. All of that becomes magnified. He, yes. he yells at the young receivers when they don't catch the ball. He re- yells at the coaching staff when the offense can't move the ball. 
And that's just part of who he is, and that's part of what you get with Aaron Rodgers. And it doesn't matter if you're winning. Nope. But they're not winning. They're not. So it's all magnified. Exactly. And staying in the AFC East, Amari Cooper goes to the Bills. It's amazing. After that game, I think both teams saw that they could not move the ball as well as they wanted to. Yeah. I think Buffalo really wanted a receiver. I mean, Buffalo was going into the year with, what, Shakir as their number one option? Yeah. I think they thought Keon Coleman would progress more, but he has not done anything. Yeah, I, I love the Amari Cooper trade for them. They really needed a number one. They, they, you know, they didn't really replace Stefan Diggs. And not that Cooper is on Diggs' level, but I, I think it's a good enough replacement. They really just needed a number one guy. They did. And, you I know. mean, if you watch that game, Alan, if that Monday night game, Aaron Rodgers was getting angry because he just kept missing guys. And he wasn't on the same page with Mike Williams and Garrett Wilson. But Josh Allen was just throwing to... Ray Davis, yep. Dalton Kincaid, and Dawson Knox. I, I, I don't think I saw a receiver make a catch mm-hmm. all night. Yeah. So he obviously needed some sort of help. So he's got it now. We'll see kind of what that does going forward. Um, I look at that AFC East, I see the Bills kind of just running away with it from here. Yeah, especially with, with Tua out, the yeah. Dolphins aren't really in a spot to contend with them. The Dolphins are down to what, 2-5 and five now? Yeah, it, it, it's been real five. ugly. Right. It, yeah, um, yeah, it's it's been real ugly <laughs> for for several AFC East teams this year. And the Patriots. I mean, Drake May looked all right in his start, but it's just like yeah, not but they're not them. going anywhere. Not so, them, so. Um, anything on the schedule uh, standing out to you this week? Um, I know there's one that I'm looking towards. What is it? Uh, you know, predictably, but I think this is the best matchup of the week: Packers Texans. Yeah. Uh, those are two offenses who have been really stellar lately. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Texas are missing Nico Collins, but still C.J. Stroud, Stephon Diggs, they're, they're able to move the ball. And two defensive de- defenses that can hang. Uh, you know, the Packers are forcing a lot of turnovers this year, giving up some points, but um, they're able to make the big play when it counts, and that offense looked electric last week. They've got all those receivers working um so i'm really excited to see what those two teams do yeah we also have the um the greatest game of the year actually going on in london this week we have the patriots playing the jags <laughs> must know, miss i don't know what london did to deserve that but that's just <laughs> they know what they did they know what they did you're right um <laughs> you also got chiefs niners oh right yeah, yeah the super bowl rematch super bowl rematch 325 weird game because the Niners have not been what they were billed to be so far this year. So interesting to see if they bounce back. Kansas City has just been doing Kansas City things. And, um, yeah, it's just been interesting for them. We also got a really interesting one on Monday, Ravens at Bucks. I don't know. It's tricky. Yeah. Because um, the Ravens have gotten so much better in the last three weeks. They look great now. Yeah. And the Buccaneers are kind of going in the opposite direction, it seems like. The Buccaneers smoked the Eagles, and they beat the Lions in Detroit. And since then, it's just kind of, I mean, they beat the Saints last week. But I don't know. I don't think Everybody's beaten the Saints yeah. lately. Uh, <laughs> not to mention last night's game. That yeah, was ugly. Um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, the, the Chiefs and Niners. Uh, you know, the Chiefs are kind of making do with, you know, the, the, it feels like they're missing a few pieces here, yeah. and they're still making it work. And the Niners, really the big piece that they're missing is McCaffrey, and Jordan Mason has been playing excellent, but it, it, it still feels like something's missing there, you know? I think we said two weeks ago the year is 2024, and Juju Smith-Schuster had 10 catches in a game. So, Unreal. I mean, it just shows what the Chiefs are doing with very, very limited resources. Yeah, and it, it was week one we were all wowed by uh, Xavier Worthy, and he really hasn't done a ton since. Well, I think now that Rasheed Rice is out, Worthy's probably getting a lot more attention. Yeah. Because besides him, it's Juju and Kelsey, so. Yeah. Going to make it work, but it's going to be a good slate. Um, Want to round it out with some trivia? Let's do it. All right, so. It's just me, so it's going to be rough. Well, no. Uh, I, I got us one to work together. Oh, um, right, if you want to use that keyboard to your right over there. So the uh, basis of today's quiz, uh, 
uh, we're naming Grizzlies players. So it's another name some dudes. Uh, right. We're naming Grizzlies players and uh, that have played at least 50 uh, games for another team. Okay. So it's, it's got every team on the list, and we're just going to name a Grizzly who played, played there. Played 50 games for another team. Yeah, okay. at, at each stop. So This might be rough, but here we go. I, I, I think it'll be easier um, than you, you're giving it credit for, but uh, Marcus let's Soul do off it. off the rip, did he play 50 games with Toronto? Oh, for sure. Interesting decision to go Toronto he first. Not. He did not play th 50 games no. for Toronto? Well, there's also Mike Connolly. We can just start with that. I feel like that's also a safe one. Did I spell it right? Uh, where are you ripping these? Okay, so it's going team by team. Oh, my God, it so is. So Grizzlies is first. So just oh name God, dude. <laughs> name someone who's only played for the Grizzlies. Don't overthink it. Ja. All right. <laughs> We're going to work together on this. What we got next? All right. Name the Sacramento teams as we get them. Zach Randolph. See, you didn't explain the rules to me. Uh, I felt like I did, but oh, no, no, <laughs> let's no. keep going. Uh, Orlando Magic. Did Lorenzo, Lorenzo Knight play in Orlando? Or am I imagining that? Lorenzo who? Knight? Um, hmm. You want to you move past that one? Yeah, let's move past Orlando. <laughs> Houston? Houston. Uh, it was recently, I think. Why it was Stromile Swift the first name I thought of. Who? Did he play for Houston? Stromile Swift? <laughs> I have no idea. Come on, man. Just type in Swift. Does that count? No? There you go. Oh, we got it. <laughs> Shane Battier was the obvious pick there. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Connolly's the obvious pick here. For Minnesota? Yeah, I can just type okay. last names, right? Yes, yes. Connolly. Oh, C-O-N-L-E-Y. Come on, man. I think you know that one. Miami Heat. Miami Heat. Um, Pushing the beat. Did he play in Miami? I think he played in Miami. You can rip it. I don't know how the, to spell the beat. T H A B E E T. No. You can always just rip guests here. Guesses here, man. Um, we always could. I mean, you Miami and Memphis. Just uh, off names here. Oh, oh, uh, um, the the uh, the point guard for uh, the the Heat championship teams, Marl Chalmers. He played for the Grizzlies and Heat. Yeah. Chalmers, yeah. Spell, did I spell it right? C-H-A-L-M-E-R-S. I didn't do the L. All right, well. <laughs> Keyboard issues, I guess. <laughs> All right, no there? No on that one? No. That doesn't make any sense. Mario Chalmers. I, I know there for a is, fact he played more than 50 games. Okay. Next Miller, team. Dude, how do we not get that? Oh, Mike Miller would fit for Magic. Uh, Did we still miss Magic? No. Uh, yeah. Rip him for the Magic. Bang, there you go. Utah nice. Jazz. Um, Conley would work again. He would. I was going to say Rudy Gay. Oh, Rudy Gay would work too. If you want to get a different name in there. Yeah. Damari Carroll. Talk about a throwback Oh, name wow. There. All right. Gasol right there. Uh, Bucks. Bucks. Ooh. Nobody's coming right to mind. Jared Bayless. Rip it. 100% he played for both teams. Boom. Oh, yeah. Clippers. Uh, can we use Zebo again? Zach Randolph would work. We just type in Randolph. You I just need he... last names, man. I'm guessing he did. Did he play for them? Oh, he definitely did. Uh, Maybe I'll use we, we might, more. yeah, might not be able to rip it twice. Um, Wait, that's gonna hurt if we can. Hmm. All right. Um, let's move past. Let's go to the Suns. Suns. Uh, <laughs> We're getting down into it. Uh, I got a good. I got one for the Pels. All right, let's go Pels. Valentunas. Oh, you're, are you going to be able to spell that? 
<laughs> Let's hope Jonas works. V A L A N C I U N A S. Hey. Boom. Quincy um, Pondexter. What a name. Okay. Kyle Lowry. There's no. Does that not work? Or did you already count for something else? Concerned about the um, spelling. <laughs> the spelling issues we're having over here. Lowry. All right. Oh, he's already in here. He's in here for the Toronto Raptors. Dang. Um, oh, man, we, we just got to get some of these guys out of the way. Um, let's see. Denver Nuggets. Uh, Mavericks. Mavericks, you could rip Vince Carter. There you go. Oh, that would have worked for Suns, too. Yeah. Rockets, um, we could have thought of Chandler Parsons. <laughs> Legend. The GOAT. Um, uh, Trailblazers? Trailblazers. I mean, my, not, my bag is not this deep. <laughs> oh, my God, wait. Uh, I just want to go for the Clippers. Uh, uh, um, the Clippers, wait. CJ Miles? Or Darius Miles? Luke Kennard for the I Clippers. I confuse those. Oh, yeah, rip it. Just got that. Um, who were you saying for uh, the Blazers? Miles. Miles. I can't remember if it was Darius or CJ. Did that not work? Miles did not work. And I think I spelled Miles right. <laughs> I think you did too. Just a shot. Uh, okay. Maybe I'm mistaken on that four one. four minutes. Lakers. Um, oh, man. I thought we would do better on this. <laughs> Maybe our bags aren't as deep as we thought. Uh, they Cavaliers, you can do Lorenzo and Wright. Right. R-I-G-H-T. Did that not work? R-I-G-H-T, not W? <laughs> oh, no. It was W-R. He ain't coming up, G. Uh, was it? Hmm. I wonder if they don't count if they're listed elsewhere. Uh, Sixers. Did but I don't see him know. anywhere else. There we go. <laughs> Murray Spates, legend. <laughs> Who's Dude, uh, you know Avery Rose? Bradley for Celtics. Avery Bradley was here. Wasn't he? Uh, I no am idea. I confusing him with somebody else? Why don't we do Marcus Smart? That feels like an easier answer. Oh uh, yeah, that's a, yeah. That he makes sense. He hasn't come up. He hasn't played fifty games. Oh, it's gotta be fifty for the Grizzlies too. No Bradley either. Yikes. <laughs> um, let's see. Mike Muscala ever play here? I don't believe so. He's usually a really good one on these. <laughs> uh, Hawks, uh, Sharif Abdurrahim. Uh, he's in somewhere else. We're not gonna is he? Use him. He's in for the Kings. Oh, he is on the Kings. I didn't remember him as a King. Um. Oh, jeez. I mean, this has been uh, Brooklyn. It's no. brutal. Uh, Wizards. Okay. Alan Chunis would have worked there too. Well, no, he hasn't played with you yet. Um. Oh man. This is way harder than I thought it would be. Yeah. Should we call time of death? Yeah, I think we could probably wrap it. We could probably call time. <laughs> we could probably wrap give it up. up. Uh, it's probably going to give you an ad. Oh, no. Uh, rip off some names that we missed. Well, it has sponsored content. The circle's just rolling. We have the nice little fun <laughs> circle of death. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Uh, well, that was we a good tried. exercise in, in naming some we Grizzlies. How many do we get? 12? Yeah. But it's also weird because you I can't thought we use other better. guys for different things. Yeah, it seemed like some names were like just Like, we could have banged out some others if it wasn't a weird thing. But that hey, was a fun one, though. We gave it our best. I liked that. I did, too. That was good. Um, anything else to add? I think that, that'll wrap us up for this week. I think that's all good for this week. Matt Enfield will be back next week on Fast Five Sports. Uh, remember, Tigers are tomorrow, 6.30 at home. Get over to Liberty Bowl. Go see him play. Team's 5 and 1. They got things rolling. So, mm -hmm. yeah, good high school games tonight. Make sure to tune in to Friday Football Fever. But that's all. We're signing off for Jacob Grant. I'm Griffin Demery.